Con Air foot bath. And boy, did they con you when they told you it was a heated foot bath. We're going to turn this over for this particular model. There's a few screws there, 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 there. I'm going to undo those. It's difficult to see, I suppose, but there's a heat strip that runs through some channels in here. And it looks like they only fill up about a quarter of the space. But given that the total wattage usage, including this bubble pump of the device, is only 35 watts, I imagine that can only count for about 10 watts, and the maximum capacity would only be about 45 watts, which is completely unacceptable. Um, we're doing an upgrade which will... This white thing here is actually the uh, input power cord, kind of camouflaged there. But in coming out of it, you'll of course see a black and a white wire. Black is of course the positive, the white is the negative. The positive uh, from the power cord travels into this brown wire, they change it to a smaller gauge wire, and it's brown, and that goes to the power switch over there. And that power switch then runs a, a return current wire. Back here, it's black, and it travels here into the motor, and over here onto the uh, resistive portion, which creates this small amount of ridiculously small heat. And then that energy from the heat wire goes back to the negative terminal and up through the power wire again. Wiring it directly to the power switch there, but that switch may not be rated for a whole lot of current. Experiment with just wiring it directly to the switch. Uh, we're going to be drawing up to two extra amps out of that switch. See this tubing here for the air hose is um, pretty soft stuff. Um, I'm going to take the light bulbs a little little ways away from that stuff so that it doesn't get too close and too warm. Two uh, screws on each section from the back on the underside of the plywood to suck these uh, one and a half by three and a halfs to the plywood. Now we're going to build the side walls. I'm going to decide on my depth. Um, so I'm going to cut two 18 by 14 and two 20 by 14s, two 21 by 14s, because I, want, I should notice that there is a one inch difference between the depth of that side and the depth of that side. That is, uh, I want to keep it pretty level, so I'm going to have to account for that. Okay, it's now an angled box. Pretty simple. I'm now going to trace the outline of this onto a piece of plywood, and then I'll cut that piece of plywood a half inch shorter, and then I'll cut the plywood outside to be inside that box and uh, drop this in the hole to get a roofing box pretty snug okay I've got a special product it's used to pack food and you can get it for damn near free at a, a, a specialty recycling center if you can find one um, it's Reflective, and it's filled with fiberglass insulation. These bulbs may get hot enough that you may need fiberglass insulation because other forms of insulation are going to melt or burn on you. Um, this has some plastic in it which may melt, so that's a gamble I'm taking. Otherwise, you can get blow in insulation and a sheet of steel, and you put the blow in insulation in, and you take the sheet of steel and you screw it down screw it down your box. Um, so to keep this stuff from falling upward, I'm going to cut some strips of metal because metal's flexible and I'm going to flex it in there and uh, I'm going to screw them to the boards. I'm again doing some wiring work. I'm going to show you where I'm going to mount this thing. I could either glue it, um, melt some plastic onto that plastic, sort of plastic weld it, or I could mount it to those bolts or those bolt holes and uh, have the lights um. okay we got the uh, installment there so basically what we're looking at is an extra wire that came from the switch positive lead um, coming into the positive lead of this uh, regular wall outlet and then, of course, we've got reinforcement for the positive lead that goes to the switch itself from the power cord because we're dealing with so much more current, uh, 35 watts compared to probably about 
335 watts, so a factor of 10 uh, increase in power consumption. You fill it with water, you plug it in. Let me show you how the plug is set up. This is a scrap plug, tore it off who knows what a long time ago. And all the white wires and all the black wires go to uh, themselves, so all black into one, all white into one. The positive wire from this plug goes to connect to here, where all the other positive wires go, and the negative wire from the plug goes to all, where all the uh, negative wires go. On these plugs, on these cords, there's a ribbed end, that's the positive end, and there's a smooth end, and that's the negative end. That's pretty typical. Um, I haven't, haven't seen any divergences from that standard so far. Um, I've torn off the grounding plug because there's no grounding wires on these items and because it's easier to plug in. So I'm gonna, I haven't plugged it in yet, I'm gonna test it here with two hands though. Okay, it's pretty bright and warm in there. Okay, we got it on. You can't see it uh, like this, but it goes in the dark. I'm gonna see in this garage, this unheated garage, what temperature this thing gets up to. The uh, critical factor here is the temperature difference between room temperature and the temperature of your pool. Please note that this camcorder sucks in low light conditions and you're seeing something. It was 101.3 degrees outdoors. Perfect.